Hi, my name is Brian and I'm the 3D print creator. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I created a functional part like this over here uh, with my Orter Master 15 watt laser cutter. And uh, I did so because, uh, well, I first designed it for 3D printing, but then I found out that 3D printing would have costed me more than four to six hours, depending on the quality I choose. And uh, I wanted it very fast because I need uh, well, a, a few uh, of those uh, boxes. And uh, because that would take too much time, I then uh, went to my Ortomaster laser engraver instead of my 3D printer and I uh, started cutting them out. Now, first, let me explain you what this is. This over here is one of my non-light video lights. Uh, it's a non-light PavaTube 6C and uh, almost all the lights you see in this room are, uh, well, are those non-light. Now, the good thing about these lights is that they have an internal battery, so I can unplug this battery and uh, still use this lamp, uh, but it's only good for about three quarters of an hour, maybe an hour if you're not running them on full power, and well, sometimes that's just not enough time to, to make your video. And therefore, I needed a solution with more power. And the good thing about these non-light PAVO tubes is that on the back side, you can power them with a very simple USB connector, a USB-C connector. Therefore, you can use almost any USB-C power bank, like the Griggs that I've got over here. Now, this is a 10,000 milliamps power bank, and uh, that bank alone is good for about three to four hours of use in full power mode. Now, this light also has its own internal battery, which is also good for about an hour. So in total, this gives me about five hours of use, uh, especially when I don't use it on full power. So at first I went to the website boxes.pi and boxes.pi or pi uh, for Python uh, is a website where you can choose all kinds of boxes and uh, after you've chosen a box uh, that you like, like uh, for example this box, uh, you can set the dimensions for that box. But then I thought I need a longer part for the back side so I can make two holes in which I can run to cables. I brought it in my Adobe Photoshop and in Adobe Photoshop uh, I could have used Illustrator as well but in this case I used Photoshop because it was just handier and easier for me um, and then in Photoshop I uh, changed one of the parts to be a yeah, slightly longer part as you can see over here. I just made it longer and I made two holes in it. And uh, because I did this, uh, this was very easy to, uh, yeah, to save and then bring over to my laser software, which you can see over here. This is my laser engraver software. And uh, well, this is just a traced out version. So I did a trace pot uh, for all the boxes. And then I had this line that I could cut. Now, I did a second thing. I also created this text layer because I just liked it. So I said, well, there should have been some text in it uh, to show you what kind of box this is uh, if I use it later on. And I gave that another color because here in this color schemes, uh, you can set different uh, modes for your laser. So this is a thing that is printed in line mode. And uh, I used it at 1400 millimeters a, se uh, a minute uh, with only 75% of my laser power. So pretty quick with a lower power. Then the other part, the black part that you see over here, has to be cut out. And therefore I used different settings like uh, 600 millimeters a minute uh, with a 100 watt power. Now, you have to know that my laser uh, has also got an air assist. And in this piece, I used a rather high speed, uh, but I used many lines or many passes. Uh, so passes are the times you get over one and the same area. 
uh, and therefore the laser can cut deeper and deeper into the material. So that's what I used on this very simple 15 watt Orton Master laser engraver, or it's the Orton Master 2 laser engraver. Uh, it's the, the bigger frame, which is very handy. Okay, so here I have the parts laid down. Um, so these are the parts that I'm going to use for this assembly. There might be a little bit of glue on places where you don't want it, but I don't really care because it's going to be sanded. And now I have to apply some gentle force to glue it in place. There it is. Rub away all the glue that's on there because that's only making it dirty. And I said it doesn't matter that it looks a bit dirty right now because I am going to sand this and then all the glue will be gone. And everything came out as expected. So now I've got this functional part. Uh, which is made in about 20 minutes uh, from start to finish. And I think this is a very functional part that if I would have used my 3D printer would have taken much more time uh, to finish. And uh, therefore in this case laser cutting was uh, yeah, the better way of doing it uh, and therefore easier to do. Now, if you like to do things like this yourself, well, the links are all in the description down below. There is a link for the Ortermaster laser engraver. The laser engraver that I use is the 15 watt version and I think that's the perfect uh, combination of both cutting power and engraving power. And uh, there is a more powerful version. There is also a weaker version. There is a 7 watt and a 20 watt version. But I love to use the 15 watt version because I think that's powerful enough yet it can engrave very very nice and uh, therefore I think this is the most versatile function uh, or fun most versatile machine for what I like to do. Um, the files for the air assist unit are on my website and you can download them from my website. Uh, there is no charge for it uh, but if you like them a lot well please buy me a cup of coffee and uh, the links for that are also in the description down below and on the right corner of my website and uh, of course uh, you will need an aquarium pump uh, for the air assist uh, one that can output 60 liters an hour uh, that's sufficient for for this uh, type of, of laser engraver and this type of air assist uh, you will need a hose that uh, is uh, six millimeters on the outside four millimeters on the inside uh, which is a standard aquarium air bubble hose and it has to have a length of about one and a half meter uh, and you will need a 3D printing nozzle uh, which has a hole of one millimeter and you don't have to buy that nozzle. Uh, you can just salvage an old nozzle and uh, create a hole in it by drilling it. Uh, that's the way I did it. I used an old nozzle that I couldn't use anymore on my 3D printers and I just drilled a hole in it. Now if you print the air assist on 0.2 millimeters layer height then uh, the threads inside the air assist will be perfectly for that six millimeter nozzle. So uh, if you have a nozzle that has a six millimeter thread, uh, you can turn it in just like a screw. Uh, it prints perfectly. Uh, I created this uh, on a way that it really works and therefore you don't need to do anything to, yeah, to, to drive the nozzle inside of the air assist. Uh, this goes also for the other side, the side where the tubing goes in. Uh, you can just put in the tubing and it will sit great. Now this is it for this video. If you like this video then please uh, follow me, uh, like this video and uh, if you could spare a few dollars well buy me a cup of coffee. Uh, the links are both on my website and in the description down below. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye!